What about insert? Yeah, if we have to, if we have to maintain the list as sorted, then note that the new item that uh, that we need to insert could have a uh, a key value to be any you know it could be any value. It doesn't have to be greater than hundred. It could be less than hundred. Could be could have any arbitrary value. Yeah, it is going to be order of n because we'll need to traverse this list and find. The appropriate location where the item needs to go and the appropriate location is going to be the location where so let's say the value of this item is say 15 then the appropriate location for this item is going to be here because 15 needs to come after 21 and but it needs to come before 3 so we need to scan this list and find the appropriate location and insert the item there and in the worst case, you may need to scan the whole list, especially if the value is, uh, you know, lower than all the values here. So then you'll need to insert in the very end. So in the worst case, in the insert operation is going to take order n prime. Now the question is, so you can see that while an unsorted list can can implement the insert op can can execute the insert operation in order one time. Remove max is going to take a lot of time, but if we go for a sorted list, we can uh, we can implement remove max in order one time, but in but it's going to cost us when we need to insert an item. So what we want to do is we want to do better than both of these alternatives. We want, for example. Can we achieve? Can we achieve an insert? So uh, these are extreme trade-offs. So can we can we achieve a balance between these two, where we don't want the you know any operation to cost order n time. We want both these operation operations to cost less than order n time. So uh, you know one one possible. Or um, uh, one good one good option could be a data structure which can implement insert and order log n time, and remove max also in order log n time. So if if we have a data structure that can do this, then that data structure would be better than both of these because no operation in this data structure is going is is, is going to take this much time. Both these operations are going to be relatively fast, and that is what basically a heap achieves. Now the reason I explained these two data structures was not to convince you that uh, lists are bad or unsorted or sorted lists are bad and should never be used. Clearly lists have advantages in other sorts of applications. What I want to uh, convey to you here is that for these two operations, assuming that my application, my program is primarily going to be using these two operations, using this sort of a data structure is not going to achieve uh, very efficient, uh, is, is, is not going to be very time e e efficient. So this is where, by the way, uh, what about an array? So instead of an unsorted list or a sorted list, what if we had gone for an unsorted array or a sorted array? If it was an unsorted array, then inserting an element could have taken, well, I guess you could have inserted it in order one time because you can always insert a new element at the end of the array, assuming that you know the array is filled from left to right. So assuming that these are the existing items, when a new item comes, as you can always insert it at the next empty spot. So insert can be done in order one time. But again, remove max will take order n time because you will need to scan all the elements in order to figure out which element has the maximum key. Likewise, if we were to implement the priority queues as a sorted array, 
with again the elements occupying the array from left to right. An insert operation would again, uh, so remove max will take order one again because assuming that this array is sorted in decreasing order of, uh, you know, keys, the, the first element of the array is going to be the item with the maximum, with the highest key value, uh, value to the key. So remove max is going to take, well, actually remove max is not going to take order one time, it's going to take order n time because when we pull out this item, we need to shift all these elements one place to the left so that we again have a compact array. So this, this is actually going to be order n. And of course, one can change this. You can say that, well, what if I had this element instead of maintaining element, uh, these elements in decreasing order of uh, key value pairs, if, if I maintain them in increasing order of key value pairs, then removing max now would take order one time. Because then all I need to do is de delete the element, delete the last element from the array. And if I am able to delete an element here, then I don't need to do any shifting. So it really depends on whether these elements are sorted in decreasing order or increasing order. And if you want to, uh, if you want to achieve high time efficiency, you'll you'll probably uh, have these elements in increasing order and remove the element at the very end. So actually, this this can be done in order one time. An insert operation is going to take order n time, no matter how, whether it's, you know, whether this array is reverse sorted or uh, sorted, because you determining where the new item should go will take order log n time, because that can be done via binary search. Since this array is already sorted, you can isolate the precise location where, where the new item needs to go by binary search. But then there's not going to be space for that item. You need to create space there. And in order to create space there, you'll need to shift the elements that are to the right of this place by one place to the right so as to create an empty spot here where the new item is going to be. So again, insert is going to take order n time. So even if you use an unsorted array or a sorted array, the time complexities of these two operations are going to be exactly the same as in a list. So the the reason for going through this is not to say that arrays and lists are not good data structures, but just that they don't do as well if our application requires insertion and remove max, these two operations. So now let's come to a heap. So a binary heap um, is an implementation of the priority queue data structure or abstract data type with two properties. I'm going to call the first property as the shape property. So a binary heap first and foremost is a complete binary tree. By a complete binary tree, I mean it is a binary tree such that Every level of the tree is full, except possibly the last, the last level or the last row. And the last row is filled from left to right. So if you want to visualize this, here's an example of a complete binary tree. So you have eight, six, 
six, four, five, one, three, two. This is a complete binary tree because every level of this tree is full. So if you recall, what is a binary tree? A binary tree is a tree in which every internal node has two children. In a complete binary tree, it is going to have, every internal node is going to have exactly two children, and every level is going to be filled. So this is this is the first level. This is the second level. This is the third level. The first level can have at most one uh, uh, one element. The second level can have at most 